Thank God again for another day and it's really blessing just to be able to see another day. Glad I'm back this Sunday. Out last Sunday. You never know when it's going to be the last day. I was having my ass, but I was thinking this might be the one. I told Tracy the other day, I said, well, it wouldn't surprise me if Aspen don't take me out or something similar to Aspen. The other thing similar to ask would be stop breathing. Mm -hmm. That was a joke there. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was a joke. It don't seem like a joke to matter to Well, I tell you what, when you got ask you find yourself joking about a bunch of things. But anyway, I thank God that I'm here to see another day. I told Pastor Scott yesterday, I said, I was down at the nine camp, but I got up before he said 10. <laughs> but it's all right. If I hadn't got back up, that would have been all right, too. That would have been all right, too. I would have been in good hands. Would have been in good hands because I would have been with the king. Been, been what we are striving to go to, that's where I would have been. If you say, well, how did you know that? Well, it's by faith. If you don't know it by faith, then you don't know anything. Because this is a faith walk. So we walk by faith, not by sight. So if our faith is not in Jesus Christ, then our faith is in the wrong thing. So it's to our best interest to be ready when it do come. That we able to be with God for everlasting in heaven. Because if we're not, then we're going to go with the devil. Spend eternity in hell. And that's a bad thing to say. But it's the worst thing to do. So let us let us make sure that we're where we need to be. We say it Sunday after Sunday. But yet still it's, it needed to be said. But yet it needed to be the response if you are not where you need to be. So if there's one that don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You won't be out of order at any time by coming to accept the Lord for your, for your Savior. So let us take advantage of the opportunity that, that, that God has given us. And what is that opportunity? We have life today. So we don't know what this evening might bring or what tomorrow might hold. But right now we have that opportunity. So we need to make sure that we see this thing for what it is. So like I said, time is winding up on us all. You might not want to hear it, but it's the truth. It's a true statement, and we need to hear it. We don't always need to hear what we want to hear, because sometimes what we want to hear, it ain't best for us. Kind of just like medicine. It might not be the best taste of medicine. Don't taste good going down, but it helps you when it gets down. So let us make sure that we are looking for this, looking at this thing for what it is. Because if you're not careful, careful Satan would sidetrack you. He had to look at one thing to take your eyes off of something else. Mm -hmm. Because that's what he did. And he's not wrong in doing that because that's his job. He is the devil. Mm -hmm. He is master of deception, of trickery, and lying, and all the things that, that God is not, Satan is. Mm -hmm. So Satan's not out of order when he's doing all the tricks he's doing to keep you from accepting Christ and getting close to God. He's not He's not out of order. You are. So make sure you're in order. Make sure you are with God. So I said that to say the doors of the church is open. Whosoever will, let him come. Amen. At this time, we're going to have an altar prayer. And ask that you pray. Pray with us. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's worthy that you be praised. Amen. Father in heaven, we come again, Lord, and we do come with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come asking you, Father, to forgive us for all of our sins. Cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. We come knowing, Heavenly Father, that you know more about us than we know about our own selves. You know more about what we need than we know how to ask you. 
to fulfill those needs. But Lord God, as we go through this life, and as we battle some with one thing and some another, but Heavenly Father, we realize that we all have struggles. Yes. For we have your word, Lord, that said, I will never leave you or forsaken you. And Heavenly Father, we, we thank you. Yes. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that even when we may not feel you, we know that you are still there. Yes. Yes. Because you promised to be there. Uh -huh. Well, Heavenly Father, as we bow, Lord, we, we need your blessings. Mm -hmm. We need your touch. We need your help. Heavenly Father, we pray, God, that you would just keep your hand around the sister, mm -hmm. Sister Lily, man. God, that you would just touch her mm -hmm. in a manner and a way, Heavenly Father, that you, you see. Mm -hmm. And Lord, you know. Yes. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we bow down, Lord, we just ask you for your mercy. Mm -hmm. yeah. We ask you, Heavenly Father, that you would continue to allow your mercy to rest upon us. We ask you, Heavenly Father, for your grace. Yes. For your grace to continue to rest upon us, Heavenly Father, because, Lord, we realize that without you we are nothing. Amen. Heavenly Father, when we look around on the world, God, it seems to become more and more unfriendly every day. Yes. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would strengthen us Thank you. Strengthen us, Heavenly Father, where we'll be able to endure and to deal with life circumstances. And to know, Heavenly Father, that we don't have to deal with them alone. Well, oh, Heavenly Father, we pray for all of those who are sick. All of those who are shed in. We pray for all of those, Heavenly Father, who are bereaved because they have lost their ones. Yes. Heavenly Father, as we come to the Christmas season, we realize, Heavenly Father, there are so many, Lord, that find these a difficult time for them. Mm -hmm. Because they are not able to celebrate in the way, Heavenly Father, that they once was. They, they don't have the loved ones that they once had, Lord, and it Amen. makes the situation hard. Yes. I know, God, you are able to carry them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know, Heavenly Father, you are able to help them, God, to, to be able to move on through. Oh, Heavenly Father, God, I just I pray this morning, Heavenly Father, that your blessing would be, be upon every door that is open in your name this morning. Pray, Heavenly Father, your blessing would be upon every family, God, that is represented here this morning and, and represent your name. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will look upon those who don't know you in the pardon of their sin. Yeah. So many, Heavenly Father, who don't yet know you. They don't understand who you are, Heavenly Father. They, they haven't had a, a, a personal experience. Pray, Heavenly Father, that you would give them that personal experience. And some, Heavenly Father, that has had a personal experience, Heavenly Father, but they have not made the commitment. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would give them that commitment, that you would help them, Heavenly Father, to find that strength, to find that what is needed on the inside of them. Lord, to call upon your name for salvation. To let you come in, Heavenly Father. To let you rest in them. And to let you change their lives. Mm -hmm. Well, Heavenly Father, we pray for our community. Yes, Lord. Lord God, as we deal with whatever we deal with, all the things, God, that comes up against us, Lord. Because, Lord, we realize that we are entering into another time. Mm -hmm. We're coming into another freight mm -hmm. of life, Heavenly Father. But, God, we know that you are the same God. Yesterday, today, and for heaven. Mm -hmm. We realize, Heavenly Father, that you are the one who had kept us yesterday. Yes. Lord, you are the one who is keeping us today. Yes. You are the one, Heavenly Father, who will keep us tomorrow. Mm -hmm. God, whatever the circumstances might be, we know, Lord, that you are in charge. Yes. Heavenly Father, we ask you to strengthen us where we are weak. And we ask you, Lord, to build us up where we've been torn down. Yes. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to prop us on every leading side. We ask you, Heavenly Father, for your blessings to be upon our children, to be upon our elders, to be upon our people, God, according to the need that you see that we stand in the need.
leader. Yeah. Oh, Heavenly Father, we need you and we can't make it without you. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just ask you to be the God that we need you to be for us. Lord God, that we might be able to see you in the way, Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. that you really are. Yeah. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to bless us today. Bless us, Heavenly Father, because we feel the path, the fight. Yeah. Bless us, Heavenly Father, because we feel the struggle. Mm -hmm. Bless us, Heavenly Father, because we know that the fight is on. Mm -hmm. And we know that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. Lord but God, we know that you come that we might have life. Mm -hmm. That we might have it more abundantly. Yeah, Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, your blessings upon this house. Mm -hmm. God, as we attempt to preach your word. Yeah. As we attempt, Heavenly Father, to praise and to worship, Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we can do it in a manner that is acceptable in your sight. Mm -hmm. We pray, Heavenly Father, that as we bow and as we call upon your name, God, that we are in the right position, yeah. in the position of humbleness, mm -hmm. in the position, Heavenly Father, that where we is able to surrender ourselves in a manner, yes. Father, mm -hmm. that is acceptable in your sight. But Heavenly Father, we realize that we can't approach your throne just any kind of way. Yeah. We realize, Heavenly Father, that you are a holy God. Mm -hmm. We realize, Heavenly Father, that you are a sanctified God. Mm -hmm. And Lord God, we call upon you this morning to sanctify us. Mm -hmm. To sanctify us, Heavenly Father, that we might be where we need to be. Mm -hmm. To sanctify us, Heavenly Father, where we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. To sanctify us, Heavenly Father, that the power in us, God, to combat the powers of the enemy, yes. to sanctify us, Heavenly Father, that we will know inside of ourselves that we are the children of God, yes. that we are your children, and, and you are our Father. Yes. And Heavenly Father, that we would be able to stand bold, we would be able to speak bold, we would be able to greet one another boldly, mm -hmm. because we know that the Lord is our God. Yes. Heavenly Father, we give you praise as we give you thanks, Thank you. and we glorify your Holy
promise that can be counted on. It's a promise that can be counted on. We just simply thank God for His promise. We honor Him. Mm -hmm. We certainly want to just honor God with our spirits. And if we're not where we need to be to properly honor Him, we ask Him to help us to be there. Amen. The scripture said that, that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And I know that only God can give us the right spirit to worship. If God don't give us the right spirit, then worship become an impossible thing. We pray that God give us that right spirit. We honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who died for our sins. I know it sounds like a broken record. But it's a record that needs to be played over and over again. Amen. You know, when you got a good song, you have to keep playing it. Amen. And even when you get away from it, you be trying to sing it. Amen. So it's a record that we play over and over again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. What a song. <laughs> what a song. It's a song that offers redemption. It's a song that offers freedom. It is a song that breaks barriers and set new records for mankind. It's a song that is able to get us places that it's impossible for us to go. So therefore, we give him praise and we honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We give honor to the precious Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God that leads and guides and directs us. It is a spirit that will correct us, will chastise us, point out our wrongness and our shortcomings. It is the Spirit of God that guides us, that watch over our everyday lives, uh -huh. that speaks to us sometimes so softly and just simply says, you know better than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes we say, I thought to myself, no, the Spirit was talking to you. <laughs> the Spirit of God that is correcting we thank God for Reverend McClurk and come to extend the invitation and to lead us in prayer. And we thank God for our brother officers and as they assist and assist in sister trying to just make sure that things are as well with her. Thank God for people who can do. Amen. We give praise and honor and thank God for each and every one of you. Y'all might seem like, well, you get dragging on and on. Hey, I'm trying to get to where I need to be. <laughs> if I don't get to where I need to be, then I might as well to be home. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm praising God. I'm seeking God. I'm looking for God. And how it, uh, it can help me to get where I need to be because... There is a word. God has given me a word. But I don't have as much problem with the word as I have with me. A lot of things that I receive from God that, that I know in myself but sometimes it's hard to find the words to bring it out of yourself. Do that make any sense to you? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I deal with sometimes with preaching. Sometimes it's just uh, emotions and everything else that you deal with in life that you just 
makes things a little bit difficult. But nevertheless, but nevertheless, scripture reading is coming this morning from the 16th chapter, St. Matthew, 24th verse, the 18th chapter of St. Matthew, and there I will begin reading at the 29th verse. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, <clears throat> If any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. Matthew 18, 29, it says, And his fellow servants fell down at his feet <clears throat> and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast them into prison till he should pay the debt. So when the fellow servants saw what was done. They was very sorry. He came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then said his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thy all thy debt, because thou desired me. Do not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I have pitied thee? And his Lord was wroke, delivered him unto the torment, till he should pay all <coughs> that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you. If you from your heart forgive not every one his brother of their trespass. May God bless the reading and the hearing the keepers of his word. Praise the Lord. We just want to talk about forgiveness. Just how important forgiveness is. Deal for the role, for the role play in our lives. We're dealing with life and the circumstances that that goes on in life. On last week talked about living a Christian life in a hostile world, a world of hostility. We know that it seems that the world is becoming a more and more hostile place. As we think about the season, Christmas season. And I realize that we probably won't be meeting again until after Christmas. But as I think about Christmas, I think about what it means. A celebration. To celebrate our Lord. To celebrate His birth. But you know, to, to celebrate the Lord is to be obedient. Jesus has said on one occasion to some people, he said, how can you say to me, Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? In other words, Jesus needed them to understand that to honor, to honor me, is to obey me. Honor is 
to obey. That while they were honoring with their lips, their hearts were far from it. As Jesus dealt with his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane, we talked about this last week. He says to them, pray that you enter not into temptation. Because the Lord knew that they were about to meet a hostility that they had never met before. And sometimes we lay down at night and we make plans for tomorrow. And we think tomorrow will be no different than the day. But this was a different night. It was a different time. And when I think about us that has been around here for any length of time, we know that this is a different time. <laughs> Our young people who has never experienced what we have experienced, who have never been where we have been, don't know that this is a different time. But we know that this is a different day. And the Lord was saying to these disciples that as you meet this hostility, you need to meet it with prayer. You need to meet it with prayer. Because Many times we pray for other people to do this or do that. But what the Lord was saying, pray that you are ready to deal with life. And whatever life brings you. The son that said, Lord, thou, where is a lamp to my foot and a light to my pathway? In other words, what the psalmist was saying, Lord, I'm guided through this life by your word. Mm -hmm. It is your word that guides me. It is your word that helps me to be able to make good decisions. It is your word that helps me to know how to treat my fellow man. It is your word that teaches me who I am and how I am to conduct myself. Lord, your word is a lamp to my feet. It's a light to my, it's a light to my pathway because without it, I don't know which way to go. Pray that you don't get caught up. Did you hear me, church? In a world that is full of hostility that you that comes at you every day Amen. one way or another Amen. the scripture says the enemy comes to kill steal and destroy that is a battle going home and the battle is for your soul Amen. that is a real devil yeah. oh my god yeah. he's real yeah. and his plan is known we know what he's all about. Amen. Jesus had instructed those disciples to pray that they enter not into temptation. Peter drew his sword and the Lord made him put it up. He cut off a man's ear. And the Lord put it back on. Amen. The Lord was able to fix what he broken. But the Lord is not always fixing the thing that we broken. Amen. The Lord don't always intervene in every situation. <laughs> there are sometimes there are some things that we have to go through. This is why he said, pray that you enter not into temptation. Because now you are living a life of Christ. And the world that you are living in is not friendly to 
to you. Amen. Jesus says if they hated me, they'll hate you too. Amen. He said if they'll do it to a, a green tree, Amen. what do you think they will do to a dry tree? Amen. I know Amen. these are words in the lost of time we don't want to hear, but they are words that we need to hear. Amen. They are words that we have to hear because they are the words that prepare us for life. Amen. Life of Christ was not an easy life. Jesus says this in his word. He said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. What is he saying? He said, the words that I'm speaking to you, the things that I am saying to you, the words that are coming out of my mouth, they are not just something that has been blown out into the wind. The words that I speak, they are a real product they are a real product with real value. And if you will engage yourself in those words, those words will produce everything that I promised that they will produce. If somebody give you a $100 bill, it has the value of a $100. But Jesus says, if I give you my word, it has the value of heaven because it has the backing of heaven. Committed against you. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Because it is up to you to forgive the same way you have been forgiven. Bear you one another's burden. And so fulfill the law of the Lord. Because you see, you have to take it. Oh my God. I know it goes against your nature. Nobody wants to take it. Nobody wants to have to deal with it. Nobody wants to be, have someone to trespass against them and then they just take it. Do you know why Christ never said a mumbling word? Oh my God. Because he absorbed it. It wasn't that he didn't have nothing to say. It wasn't that he couldn't change the situation. He said, do you not know? I could call on my father and he would send me more than 12 legions of angels. And they would fight my battle for me. But he knew if he had did that, that he wouldn't have absorbed your sins. If he had did that, then you couldn't be free. If he had did that, then you couldn't have salvation. But he took our sins on himself and then give us his word. And his word tells us that as I have forgiven you, you forgive one another. Amen. We're living in a world that is full of hostility. But you see, hostility is not just on the outside. Hostility is on the inside. Amen. Sometimes we as church members become hostile against one another. Amen. It's nothing new. The disciples was hostile against one another because they was trying to see who got the best seat. They began to bicker among themselves because they did not understand the plan of God. And now they are trying to fight to get some work that the Lord had never intended for them to be in this world. And they was hostile towards one another because they thought one was going to get something that the other felt like he was better equipped to have. Amen. Oh my God. Woo, that's a word there. Amen. Paul and Barnabas found themselves in a hostile battle. Two missionaries going all over the world preaching the gospel and now when they come into a disagreement, they can't do missionary work no more together. Because they're mad at each other. Oh my God. You see, the church hadn't just now started having hostility against one another. It's been around a long, long time. But the scripture gives us an answer. It gives us a way how we deal with it. And we deal with it through forgiveness. We deal with it through forgiveness. The Lord don't need us sitting in our chair with a mind poked up to one another. Amen. 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 He needs us to be able to absorb it. <laughs> because sometimes what we are mad about <laughs> sometimes it's just nothing but a misunderstanding. Sometimes you didn't hear what you thought you hear. And even if you did, you still got to absorb it. Oh, oh my Lord. And if you ain't there yet, just pray, God, Lord, I ain't there yet. Lord, help me to get there. And I declare if you pray that prayer, God will help you to, to get there. Hostility needs to be met with prayer. And it needs to be met with forgiveness. Yeah. It needs to be met with forgiveness. There are lots of people packed up and ready to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but 
unforgiveness in his back. <laughs> back full of hostility and unforgiveness. Oh, I'm on my way. You want to unpack? Unpack and see what you got in your bag. And if there is someone you have not forgiven, you need to get it right. Amen. 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 Reverend McClurkin said, well, I go there, it's a real hell. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, it's real. Mm -hmm. And Jesus gives us the story of a certain king that takes account of his servants. And it said that there was one brought to him who owed a debt that he, he couldn't pay. And he says to the king, have patience with me. If you will have patience with me, I will pay you all. This king said, that he is to be sold, him, his wife, and his children. Listen to this. And payment be made on the debt. In other words, the scripture is saying, if you sold his whole family, <laughs> that would only be a down payment. <laughs> and what the scripture wants us to know, that we owe a debt that there is no way we would ever be able to pay. Amen. We can pay on it and pay on it and pay on your life and not big enough to pay it. Amen. And the man says, have patience with me and I will pay you all. No matter how much patience God has with me, I will never live up to his standard without Christ dying for me. Amen. Without Christ paying the price for me. I'll never be able to pay that debt. And the scripture said the king had and he forgave him of his debt. But this man, oh, had someone who was also indebted to him. And he goes to this man and he says, pay me what you owe me. And this man just owed a small debt. He could have paid the debt if he would have just given him time. Oh, my God. Listen to me, children. When we trespass against one another, we can pay that debt. Oh, have your Holy Ghost. When we trespass against one another, we can pay that debt. Mm -hmm. And we can absorb the debt when we want to be violated. Mm -hmm. But we can never pay God. Amen. And he says to the man, pay me all that you owe me. But the man said, I didn't have it. I don't have it to pay. But he took the man and threw him in prison. And he says, you're not coming out till you pay me. <laughs> man, don't that sound like us? <laughs> but when the king heard of how he had treated the man, he said, I had pity on you. Shouldn't you have pity on your fellow servant? And because the man was hard-hearted, because the man was not willing to absorb the debt, because he was not willing to forgive and give this fellow servant an opportunity to go free just as he had been set free, he reaped what he sowed. I believe I heard you say that a while ago. <laughs> he reaped what he sowed. The very debt that he owed, that he had been forgiven, had it reinstated. Mm -hmm. And this is what the scripture says. And the Lord shall do us the same way. Mm -hmm. That's being gay. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall do us the same way. We can forgive. The ones who trespass against us. How many times have I trespassed 
against my God. How many times have I broke his rule? How many times have I overstepped his bounds? But every time I go to him, he restores me. Every time I go to him, he reminds me that I don't hold you and against you. Because I've absorbed it in myself. When he went to the cross, and he hung on that cross, and he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. All the assault, all the abuse, all the cursing, all the slapping, all the spitting, all that they put against him, he absorbed inside of himself and said, you are forgiven. I hold this not against you. My God, what a Savior. What a Savior. What a Savior. What a Savior. He's able to absorb all the sins of the world. This is why he can say, whosoever will, let him come. Yes, that's what he's saying. It don't matter how big your sin is, I can help it. Mm -hmm. It don't matter how bad you've lived your life, I got you. Mm -hmm. It don't matter how terrible you think you are, how far Satan has pushed you down, and how he has made you see and feel about yourself, I got you. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. Whosoever will, let him come. I'm almost done here. I want to point out one more thing, at least. <laughs> the scripture says that in the church, if you know that a brother or sister have an alt against you, this is it is. <laughs> Go to him. Mm -hmm. Somebody wait for them to come to you, ain't you? <laughs> you the one done it. I ain't going to him. He the one started it. But the scripture said, go to him. You and you alone. You hear what I'm saying, church? Sometimes you can resolve your issues if you don't get everybody involved. <laughs> Sometimes we want a lot of people involved because we want to hear what we, what we told them something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I told them something, didn't I? I know I'm being a little bit comical, <clears throat> but I'm talking about this, <clears throat> and we do operate that way. <clears throat> but the scripture says, go to him. You alone. Why? Because you are seeking restoration. Mm -hmm. You're not seeking to just try to get even with somebody because that's not real reconciliation. Mm -hmm. You are seeking, you are seeking, you are seeking reconciliation. Now, you may not be able to live 50 miles with that person, but yet still your heart needs to be right. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, this is some good preaching. Amen. Man, I mean, it's my say. <laughs> then he said, if he don't hear you, then you take two or three more. Take two or three people with you with the same righteous spirit. Oh my God. Listen, church. When you take somebody with you to try to find restoration, don't take old John Jim that you know ain't about nothing. <laughs> you know all he gonna do is put gas on the fire. <laughs> he ain't the one to take. <clears throat> take someone of a humble and a loving spirit. Mm -hmm. Take somebody with you that 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 mm -hmm. wants to see restoration. Mm -hmm. Take somebody with you with the heart of God who know how important it is for brothers and sisters to be in fellowship. 
And he said, when you take those people with you, and when you speak, every word shall be established. Because you have witness to bear witness. Not only to the word, but those with the right spirit has the ability to bear witness of the spirit in which you said it is. The spirit in which you sought restoration in. The spirit in which you sought fellowship in. This is the church that he's dealing with now. <laughs> then he says if they don't hear you and if they can't be persuaded by those two or three that is with you, then he said take him to the church. Bring, <laughs> have a church meeting. <coughs> oh my God, listen boy, this is some preaching this morning. Now, let me show you something. This is what Jesus said he that hate mother, father, sister, brother, or even his own life, can't be my disciple. Because what he is saying, that I can't take my brother's side. Y'all hear that? <laughs> that I can't take my brother's side because we are blood brothers. The church is saying, well, he won't pay no attention. Let's throw him out. No, he's my brother. Oh man, I'm by myself. <laughs> Y'all might well say, man, hey, where the one says it. I mean, I'm just echoing what the word is saying. The word is saying to us that God's word has to be taken over our blood relationship. This is why Jesus said, he that do the will of my father, the same as my brother, my sister, my mother, and my father. So therefore he said, then if they come here the church, if the church is where it's supposed to be, it don't make no difference, my brother. It don't make my difference if it's my cousin. If he's not following the rule, I need to say, Amen. let it be. Amen. As a public and a, a heathen man, what is that saying? He's no, he's not a church member. Oh my God, he's not part of this fellowship. Let me show you something else. And this happens a lot. Some people get mad and say, well, I don't have to go to that church no way. <laughs> and then they'll go somewhere else. But, let me, but they miss something. The Lord said, whatsoever you bow on earth, he'll be bound in hell. In other words, if the church has done the right thing. And the person do not want to comply to the church rule. Then help them honor the decision to let him be as a heathen or a publican man. And what is that saying? It don't make no difference where he goes, he's out of fellowship. It don't make no difference. He can go to every church on the on the market or downtown or south or north or wherever. He is out of fellowship with God. Amen. And he will not be in fellowship with God until he come back to make things right with his brother. What do the scripture say? He says if you take your taking a gift to give it to God and remember that you have a scramble or all against your brother. He said, leave your gift and go and reconcile with your brother. And then you can come back and I will accept the gift. You know, the word of the Lord just simply says to us, I'm not accepting your gift until you make restoration or at least seek restoration. Seek peace. Seek to be on a good term. As long as it rests upon you, be at peace with all men. We know there are people who are not going to be at peace. You, we know that there are people who are not going to do the right thing. It's just a fact. Amen. But you ain't going to answer for me. So what is the scripture saying? The scripture says we need to forgive one another. We need to forgive one another. It's a matter of life and death. And I realize that sometimes people may hurt you and violate you in a way that is so hard, it's hard to forgive. 
this is why the Lord said, deny yourself. He says, deny yourself because he knows that within your own power, you don't have the power to do it. Because when you deny yourself, now he is the one that's able to lead and guide you. He's the one that takes control of the wheel when you deny yourself. I'm going to share this with you and I'm going to get ready to go. I remember years ago when I was a Timlet, there was a older lady there and Pastor Tucker was talking about love, that you have to love one another. And all the time he was talking about love, she was saying, and he said, you mean you don't love everybody? You gotta love everybody. She, she said, well, I don't. And he said, well, you know you're supposed to love. She said, well, I just don't love everybody. <laughs> but I remember later on she came and she said, I love everybody now. Why did I tell that story? I told that story because I understand a lot of time we are not there yet. A lot of time we are not there yet. But we have to be seeking to get there. <laughs> and if we just not there, just, just be honest and say, God, I am not there. I still can't stand it. <laughs> and when you see your God, <laughs>
But it is through the word of God that we know how to operate. He gives us instruction on how to operate. He didn't say it would be easy to do. But he said, follow me. Father in heaven, we do come again, Lord. And we come with thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your holy word, for your truth, for your truth, oh God, that you have spoken to us, that you've given us the guidance that we need, Heavenly Father, to be able to go in our own hearts, to take inventory, Heavenly Father, of ourselves, to see where we act, to see, Heavenly Father, that it is is our hearts pure or where, where we need to be with you? Thank you, Father. Thank you. And Heavenly Father, we pray now, God, that we have searched ourselves. And if we have found in us that there is something that is not right, Oh God, that we have now began to attend to it. Mm -hmm. Because we have now, Lord, have healed. And now we have surrendered it to you. Mm -hmm. In our minds and our spirits and our hearts, we have said to you, God, help me. Yeah. We know, Heavenly Father, that those words will produce great results. Heavenly Father, we are continuing to pray your blessings upon your people. Mm -hmm. As we go day by day, mm -hmm. oh God, just go with us and stand by us and please stand for us. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. We claim victory mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. yes. We count it as already done <coughs> in the precious name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now may the love of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ be buried in a risen Savior. May the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest rule and may it abide with each of us until we shall meet again. Let us all say, Amen. Amen.